Hello and welcome to a political forum. Today is Wednesday, January 15th, 2014. We'd like to welcome you today to our guest. Our guest here today is Alderman Walter Burnett Jr. from the 27th Ward. Thank you, Alderman, for joining us today. Thank you, sir, for having me. And my name is Freddy Calixto. I'm a board member here at CAN TV. Uh, this is a live interactive program brought to you as a community service for, from CAN TV. We welcome your questions and comments for, for, Walter, for Alderman Walter Burnett by calling us at 312-738-1060. During the next 25 minutes, we'll try to get as many of your calls as possible on the air. And today we're going to talk with the Alderman about some ward initiatives. So Alderman, what kind of initiatives are going on in your ward today? Well, um, Freddie, uh, you know, our ward and, and our new ward with the, the new remaps, uh, we roughly go from um, Clark Street to Avers on the west, uh, roughly North Avenue to Roosevelt uh, on the south. Uh, so it's very uh, diverse. Um, changed slightly a little bit uh, from what it was before, but we've added the medical district in there. Um, we had added uh, more of Old Town. We added the Goose Island area. So it's, a, it's changed a little bit. Um, there's a lot of exciting things going on in our ward. We're trying to move things west. Um, there's, uh, we just had a new target built over in the, uh, in the north area, former Cabrini Green area. <coughs> uh, there's a proposed development uh, where the old YMCA used to be on, on uh, Clybourne and Halston where they're proposing a Mariano's grocery store, uh, a movie theater, and, um, and some housing development. And, and, and uh, restaurants and other things that are proposed to be happening there, which brings brings a lot of jobs to the community. Uh, also, uh, we're getting ready to sit down with the uh, with the residents over there and and come up with a uh, uh, some input and some discussion about the whole fo uh, floor plate over there in the community uh, for the CHA uh, property, and we're proposing to do that with an organization called. Uh, the Ninov Unity Program. The Ninov Unity Program is an organization that, that I put together with LISC and, and the MacArthur Foundation, funded through the MacArthur Foundation to LISC, to try to bring everyone in the community together, whether you're mixed income, uh, market rate, low income, affordable, um, from all walks of life, to get people to start conversating together and also abandon to the community and the future of the community. Because we rebuilt bricks and mortar, but we have to rebuild the community. And uh, so we've been working together, and so we're going to bring that proposal to them for which all of the proposals that happen in that community, we bring to them now. And I encourage folks that live in the Ninoff area to get involved. Look up uh, NNUP. Uh, they have a website, um, and it tells about everything that's going on in the community, and we meet monthly. And you guys should get involved, uh, and, and you'll be able to see some of the proposals or have input on some of the proposals that's going to happen with the rest of the CHA land. But also when you get west of there, you know, we have a big development getting ready to happen on Milwaukee and Halstead, uh, getting rid of that old gray building over there. Uh, of course, there's a lot of exciting things going on in the West Loop area. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of the top restaurants over on Randolph Street. Uh, we have Google moving to the area. Uh, and there's a lot of auxiliary uh, uh, businesses that are moving to the area because of Google. So there's a lot of jobs happening in the community. There's a lot of construction going on. Soho Hotel is moving over there. Um, you have uh, Robert De Niro is thinking about uh, have a proposal for his restaurant Noble and uh, and a hotel to be built over there. So there's a lot of exciting things. It seems like New York is moving to uh, Chicago to because the 27th ward. to the 27 <laughs> ward. But also we have the Malcolm X happening in the community. We have Malcolm X redevelopment going on, the new Bulls Stadium. Uh, the new Bulls Training Center is being built. Uh, we're looking to redo the Blue Line over on Damon and, um, and, and the Expressway over there. And then uh, in an, another new part of the ward, uh, there's excitement going on because they're, they're almost finished up with the new Peace Market that's getting ready to happen on, on Madison and Western. And uh, so it's, it's a myriad of other things that's starting to happen. 
and uh, the west side is, the, is, is, is what's happening. Uh, I like to encourage folks to not only move to the area, but come over there and develop because this is like, you know, where it's the new frontier for the city of Chicago is the west side. So. Right. Well, it's, it's very busy. you got a lot of things happening in the 27th Ward. Uh, caller, just remind you to call in with your question. We have a question from a caller. Uh, his, question, his or her question was, how do you address uh, fixing potholes in the 27th Ward? Well, one of the things is, a uh, couple of things is, one, you can call our office, uh, and we'll call it in. Also, if I'm, not, put this overhead. Also, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> the uh, city of Chicago, you can call 311, and they have some kind of technical system that they have to deal with all the potholes that they've been working on uh, for a couple of years now, where they try to address them. Uh, through through the Department of Transportation, so you can call three one one, and or you can call our office, and in both cases, uh, uh, we'll work with you on taking care of those potholes. Now you got to understand one of the challenges with the potholes is uh, in this in this frigid weather. The only thing the city can do because all the asphalt plants are closed is put on cold patch. The challenge with cold patch is when it get real cold, um, it may not it may not stay there. So, you know, so hopefully we don't get that frigid weather that we just uh, that we just experienced uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago. Thank you. We have a caller on the line. Caller, what's your question? Hi, um, I know that the city council passed the ban on smoking e-cigarettes indoors. And, uh, I mean, I'm not a smoker or an e-smoker, but I was just wondering, like, what's the compelling government interest for banning people from smoking those things inside, given that there's no scientific evidence that there's any, you know, negative side effects or secondhand smoke or anything like that. Like, okay, well, <clears throat> I got to be honest with you. Uh, I, I um, was was sort of split on that. I'm, I'm not the, I wasn't one of the uh, strongest advocates for the e-cigarette situation, uh, but there was some compelling arguments on both sides. Uh, but on the uh, banning side, uh, they were sort of alluding to the same thing they did with cigarettes. It was like, it's all right if you smoke an e-cigarette, but you don't want to jeopardize other people's health uh, because you choose to do that. And and there were some arguments uh, in reference to the e-cigarettes uh, possibly having uh, some, some chemicals that came out of them that can harm people's health uh, with nicotine and... Uh, they're talking about uh, a whole bunch of other things um, that, that may be involved. And then on the other side, they were arguing that it wasn't, you know. So either way, um, um, to me, I said to myself, well, basically what you're saying is you don't want people blowing smoke in people around people while they're inside. Same thing with cigarettes, um, but you still allowing people to smoke. The only difference is they just got to go outside. And, you know, I don't understand why it's such a big deal. We already accustomed to doing that anyway So uh, with the cigarettes. So this is just another, we're not banning, e, we're not banning e-cigarettes. Uh, we're just banning uh, them being in public places so that if a person uh, don't want that smoke around them, they don't have to deal with it. And it's the, that's the same argument as with regular cigarettes. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, good question. Uh, just a reminder that you're watching Political Forum, Community Service for Can TV. I'm Freddie Calixto, board member of Can TV. This is a live interactive show. If you have a question for the Alderman, please call 312-738-1060. And we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, thank you for taking my question. I was just curious, Alderman, uh, do you know what the fate is going to be of the Dominics in the ward? Well, you know, um, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, so I don't know which Dominics you're talking about. Uh, well, in my old ward, I had the Dominics on Halstead and Madison. And in my, in, 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 in my old ward, I also had the Dominics on Clybourne and Division. Uh, right now, I don't know if anyone that's looking at it... Um, at first, Tony's was looking at it. Uh, also, uh, Walgreens looked at it for a minute. I just spoke to some of the Walgreens representatives today and kind of sort of bagged them to keep looking at it. Uh, but uh, Tony's looked at it for a minute. They had called me up. They looked at it. One of the challenges is, is you know, we had a target right on uh, Larrabee and Division. 
uh, and then we get into Mariano's right across around the corner from there. So it, it has to be uh, probably a um, a grocery store or, or a venue that that may not be as competitive, but you know. But at the same time, you see all these places, they like to move right next to each other and compete with each other. So uh, the mayor has appointed a special commission. Uh, there are several aldermen on it, uh, several other people from the city and some business folks to try and help to find uh, uh, different businesses to come and fill those spots. I think uh, both places in our ward are very hot spots. They're very, uh, both of them are a lot of area with a lot of traffic. So there's a lot of opportunity for businesses to make money. Uh, the demographics are very strong in those areas. I can't see uh, those areas not being able to uh, pick up someone uh, to fill those spots, hopefully real soon. Uh, I'm going to continue to do everything I can to try to bring those jobs back to our community and also bring that resource back to the neighborhood. And I know that the mayor is very concerned about it and also a lot of people in City Hall. So um, to answer your question, I don't know of anyone specifically right now. I heard that the one, um, I heard that the one on Halsted and Madison, Whole Foods may be looking at it. As you know, that, that Dominix was right across the street from Mariano's also. Uh, and then actually right down the street from there on Adam Street, there's supposed to be a, uh, a fresh market, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But we're going to work as, as hard and diligently as we can uh, to attract, attract some other venue there. Uh, it's a big enough space. There's a lot of traffic there. There's something's going to go there. I can't see um, the one on Clyborne and Division uh, being vacant for a long time. Great. Thank you for that question, caller. I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, what's your question? Hi, Alderman. In regards to the Dominics, um, the one in your old ward on Halstead, is it possible that a parking garage can go there because parking is very difficult um, in this area and hard to find parks? Sometimes the meters are full and the lots that are in the area are full, so I see <coughs> the need for another parking structure. Yeah. Well... <coughs> Um, there's a couple of other developments that's coming up over in that community, and they're going to have parking. Uh, the one I just mentioned with the Whole Foods, uh, with the uh, Fresh Market, if I'm not mistaken, is going to go on Adams and uh, Halstead that's being built right now is going to have a lot of public parking uh, in that building. Um, and then right across the street uh, from uh, where that Dominic's is, where the hotel is, there's a development that's going to go there that's going to have some more parking also and um and then there's a a, a proposal uh, for a building right behind the mariano's on uh, green and uh, madison where there's possibly going to be some parking too so uh and then down the street there's a proposal um on randolph and the expressway where they're building uh, a lot of public parking with an automatic uh parking structure where the you the cars go into the elevator and go up and park the car so there's going to be uh some more parking uh going in over there that proposal just came to myself in the community uh last month and uh we're waiting for it to come to the plan commission and also to the zoning uh to zoning to be approved but there's a, a proposal right there so people are thinking about parking in the area there's two thoughts on parking now, now i think with that dominic's and you need to understand that building is in a building which is a which is a residential building they own condos there's a lot of owners there that dominic's is a that space of dominic's is a is a condo and somebody owns that and whomever owns that have to decide what they're going to do with it it's not a public space so uh myself and or the uh current alderman there really can't control or tell them to put a parking structure there. Of course, they would have to do what's, uh, what's best for them and what fits in that zoning. Yeah, thank you, caller. Good question. Do we have another caller on the line? Caller, what's your question? Yes, hi. Uh, there were two things I wanted to um, mention. The first one, uh, Monday, uh, there's a free event at the History Museum, which Chicago History Museum at the corner of North and uh, 
um, Clark. Clark, right, exactly. And uh, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., there are going to be all kinds of activities and, and uh, performances uh, for Martin Luther King Day. And I wanted to make sure that the word got spread that it's free. And there's, you know, there's a lot of talk about cars and parking and things like that. You know, there are wonderful buses on North Avenue and on Clark Street, easy to get there. Um, that was the first thing I wanted to say. The second thing I wanted to see if I could get some information about whether there's any progress that's been made on the renewal of the Comcast franchise that's coming up for public TV. And um, I'm part of a group called the Committee for Media Access, and we're very concerned that the contract is up to the level that the RCN contract was, you know, with a lot of um, independence and funding for public TV. So that, that's my question to you, and thank you for listening. You're welcome. Thank you for calling. Well, first of all, uh, I want to concur with um, your information about the uh, History Museum for Dr. Martin Luther King. Thank God for Dr. Martin Luther King. Today is his birthday. Uh, so in heaven to you, Mr. King, happy birthday, and thank God for you being born and contributing the things that you've contributed to our society. Um, and you must work for Can TV because uh, before I came in this room, the people from Can TV was talking to me just <laughs> about what you're talking about. Uh, and being a, a advocate for Can TV, I, I, I believe and think that uh, Comcast need to do what they need to do for public television. We need this public access for the public so people like you can continue to call in, can get information, folks can have shows, folks can give their information just like you just used this as a commercial for what you wanted to use it for. Uh, this is a great venue for us and, and normally uh, if you had to go to regular television to do that it would cost you a lot of money. So definitely uh, we want to hold Comcast's feet to the fire that they need to do what's fair and just in relationship with this. Uh, I was just told um, before I came in here that in New York City, um, Time Warner just gave their public access television um, a, a, a nice deal, HDTV, the whole nine yards, uh, to bring them up to part with everything else that's on cable television so that they can look just as good and be just as good as anything else on television so that folks would not hesitate to look at their programming that's going on. So I think uh, we're just as good, if not better, than New York. Uh, we need to have the same thing here. So we're going to mention these things to Can TV, and I'm sure before I leave here, I'm going to get more information from this organization about uh, uh, different things that, um, that quantify and qualify uh, this organization to, to get what they need from uh, Comcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that caller. Thank you for those questions and for that information. Uh, another caller on the line? No more callers. Okay, Alderman, we don't have a caller on the line. Uh, let's go back to some ward initiatives. What other? You talked about the Blue Line upgrade. Yeah. Where exactly is that? So the Blue Line upgrade is going to be on Damon, uh, and the, Damon and the Eisenhower. But one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to do with CTA right now, uh, and they're looking for some TIF money to go into that. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling them... Um, we need to do the same thing that you did on the red line, uh, that I want them to have a job intake, job fair for the people in the community to have an opportunity to get a job. I don't know exactly how many jobs would be available or what type of jobs would be available, but we want to work with them. One of the things that we did with the, uh, with the uh, Malcolm X development, we offered the opportunity for many people in the community to go through uh, Dawson Technical Center to get trained to be able to work construction. And a lot of those folks, a lot of them are going to end up working on the Malcolm X site, but some of them may not. So maybe some of those same people, if not more folks, may also get the opportunity to work on this uh, CTA uh, structure. Awesome. So that's one of the things that we're trying to do. Uh, one of the other things that, that we didn't mention that was in the paper today was uh, the dog park. We wow. got a... Uh, a dog park going on at, um, and we just voted uh, yesterday, and that came up because we just voted yesterday for some money to go there through our uh, uh, Green Space Impact Fund. 
uh, to, to help pay for that park. That park is about a million dollar park. It's one of the second largest dog parks in the city of Chicago. There was some debate about that park because some folks wanted uh, uh, grass. But park district policy is not to put in grass. They want artificial turf because they think it's, it's more sanitary and it's easier to maintain. Uh, I tried to get the park district to compromise. Uh, we're having those kind of debates all over the city as far as where dog parks go. Um, some community people are, are, don't like the artificial turf. Uh, we've been working on this for several years in my community. And I was like, hey, uh, let's just move on it. Let's get it done because we don't have a dog park in our area. And this is a very large dog park. And it's going to uh, be conducive for large dogs and small dogs. And there's going to be enough room for you know, folks to really enjoy. So I'm very excited about that. But along with that, uh, we just got funding for two other parks in our ward. A park is going to go up on Wilcock and um, in Washington Street, uh, uh, not too far from United Center, a former with a Henry Horner area is. A new park is going up there, which is going to be very nice, very large, to get those folks an opportunity to have some of their own green space where they can come out and barbecue. You know, in some of these redevelopment areas, they don't allow the people to barbecue on their front porch or their back porch. So just give them an opportunity to have a space to barbecue, to be able to connect with people, to be able to come together and get to know each other. Also, we're getting money to uh, put a track uh, over in the Star the, the Star Gates Park over on, um, on uh, Oakley and Washington. Uh, we just got um, several thousands of dollars for, for both of these parks. So we're working diligently, diligently on all our parks uh, in our ward, and uh, and I and I'm very thankful that the city and the park district have worked with me on this. Great, thank you. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what's your question? Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, good question evening. concerning the development on Randolph, uh, Alderman. You talked about before um, about just the great restaurants that are that are around that area on Randolph Street, and I know that uh, with Ina's coming out and uh, Lou Malnati's coming in. I'm just looking to see, is there any other tidbits you can tell us about other restaurants or any other development that's going to go on in that area? You know, um, so, yeah, Lou Manianos is going there. Um, other restaurants, other restaurants. Um, you know, there's a uh, restaurant. So, you know, the Soho Hotel is coming in uh, on Green between Randolph and Washington. And they're going to have a couple of restaurants in there. You know, Soho Hotel is a hotel. It's a couple of Soho hotels all across uh, the world. I think one in London, one in New York. They're pretty much like uh, hotels, like a private boutique hotel where a lot of actors and wealthy people go. They have health clubs in there. But they're putting in a couple of restaurants in, in, in the bottom of the Soho Hotel. One is going to be a basic uh, hamburger place, if I'm not mistaken. And then across the street from there... Is going to be another restaurant, which is going to be sort of a um, sort of a, a restaurant that has sort of a um, a country music feel in it. And and right now they're trying to get approval from the community to get a PPA so that they can play music there and stuff like that. And I don't know if the community is going to agree with that, but that that restaurant is going there. Uh, and I was telling you about Nubu is going to open up, and that's uh one of if if we get that. D development approve or get a get a compromise on what the community want and what the developer want. Uh, that's uh, the restaurant that uh, Robert De Niro has in New York. Uh, it's going to go there. So um, um, I'm trying to think of any other restaurants because uh, you know I'm telling you it's, it's moving so fast over there in the community. So even even where the Google Space is going, I think. Um, um, they're going to have a couple of restaurants in that building. There's another building right by that that they're going to have uh, some restaurants in. Uh, so, and then there's another proposal for a uh, for a, um, a Bismarck Bowl, a bowling alley is is being proposed over on Fulton Street. We don't know if that's going to happen, but I mean, there's so many things happening in that area that's being proposed. Uh, we have to start to wrap this up. So, thank you, so, callers. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, I'm going to put in the, this is where you can reach the alderman if you're interested in following up on some questions you had and didn't get, get on the air. Uh, thank you for being on the air with us, alderman. We appreciate having you. Thank uh, you. We'll thank be, you all for your questions, too. Uh, we'll be uh, back on Can TV here next Wednesday uh, with Political Forum. So our next, our, any last things that you want to 
share with the audience before we wrap this well, up? Well, I just want to let people know my office move. Uh, my office uh -huh. is now at 4 Northwestern. It's on Western and, and, and Madison. Actually, it's Kitty Corner from the new uh, Peace Market that's opening up over there with the end. Uh, I have Ward Night there every Thursday night from from um, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock, first come, first serve. You just come in, no appointment, first come, first serve. You sit down and talk to me. I have to forewarn you, I get quite a few people there, so it's not like a half-hour meeting. It's like you get a couple of minutes, 10, 10, 10 minutes or so to talk to me, and we try to see if we can help resolve any of your issues that you may have. But we also do the same thing uh, on Monday nights at 1452 North Cedar Street with our Secretary of State, Jesse White, uh, from 5 to 7 on Monday nights. So the number, the, the address has changed, but the phone number hasn't? Right. The address has changed. The address, is the phone number is the same. Okay, so that's, they put the phone number there, 312-432-1995, and we'll have to get the new address. The address is 4 Northwestern. 4 Northwestern. Thank you.